The economy is shit. The recession is probably going to continue for a while. So today we're going to talk about 11 things you can do as an individual, as an employee, as a worker in our economy. What you can do to survive the current recession and maybe even thrive. All right, let's get to it. The, the economy is in the shit right now. I mean, uh, I actually made a video about why this recession is happening. Uh, you can uh, click the link here or down below to find that video. And I explain clearly why this recession is happening. It has a lot to do with COVID, a lot to do with government's printing a lot of money. There's a lot of money floating around in the economy. It has to do with very low interest rate. It has to do with a lot of uh, bubbles in the stock market and uh, uh, the real estate market. It has to do with the Russian invasion of Ukraine. It has to do with many, many things. Uh, the, the invasion of Ukraine caused the energy price to go up, caused the food price to go up because uh, you know Ukraine and Russia are two major uh, food production countries. Uh, so you can find that video, you can watch it to find out why we are in this stagflation uh, situation. And the recession that we're in is not a normal recession, all right? This is a structural recession it's stagflation meaning the economy is not doing well but the inflation is going up and typically when this happens it's much harder to correct it means that it's gonna last much longer and it's gonna be more painful all right so today we're gonna talk about 11 things that you can do to navigate yourself through this recession and hopefully at the end of it even thrive from it all right so let's get to number one because you know the economy is bad. Your company is probably thinking about laying people off. They probably wanna reduce their workforce because payroll is always the number one expense of any company, all right? I have a lot of companies I know, like the number one expense for all of my companies are payroll, all right? So they're probably thinking about how to reduce that payroll and if it should happen, they lay you off, they let you go, they terminate your employment, then gotta cut spending now and put more money into savings to cover that contingency so a good idea is 50 30 20 all right so 50 percent of your income should be spent on necessities like your rent like your house like your food like all the things that you need right and the 30 percent should probably spend on nice things like nice to have like uh, going to the movies uh, having coffee with friends those things are nice to have but not necessary and the remaining 20% should go into um, savings so you should create a savings account find the savings account with the highest interest rate and then put the 20% of your income into that so whenever you get a paycheck you put 20% of that paycheck into that account. It's like you're paying yourself, right? Every month you pay yourself. That 20% go into the saving account and you don't touch it. But that becomes your emergency fund. Just in case something happens, maybe your company lay you off, your company let you go terminate your employment. Now you have some money there, or you have some money there to cover your uh, emergency. You don't want to go to your mom and dad and say, Oh, I got laid off. Oh, please uh, let me have some money. Or go to your friends and say, Please let me borrow some money. Because that makes you look like a fucking idiot and a fucking loser and a fucking fucktard, right? So, of course, you want to have an emergency fund, right? And that should be in the form of a high interest saving account. And you should put 20% of your income into that. And you should build an emergency fund that will last you three months to six months in case you get laid off, in case you don't have a job, you have no income, then that emergency fund should cover you up three to six months because it may take you up to three to six months to find another job, all right? So just be prepared for it. In Vietnam, in the last, uh, probably last five years, 
it's becoming popular for young people to accrue a lot of debt because it's very easy to go to FE credit, home credit, or you know all kinds of credit places and get money. The interest rate is very high, but it never stopped young people from going to those places. How I know? Because I have a lot of employees that do that, and when they cannot pay back, they suddenly disappear. They borrow a lot of money from my other employees, and then they poof, disappear, right? Those are fucking fucktards, but it happens. So you know the economy is not doing well. If you have a lot of debt, maybe you owe the bank, maybe you owe a uh, loan shark, maybe you owe like FE credit or home credit or all other credit companies, now's the time to look at all the money that you owe and figure out how to pay them back now because the interest rate will only get higher and higher and higher and higher. It will become very, very difficult to service that debt. And you want to be able to get rid of that debt as soon as possible so you don't have to service it. So if you cannot pay off your debt, let's say you don't have enough money to pay all the debt you have, well, you're really fucked, all right? I mean, if that's the case, then well, I don't know, just like fucking cut your arm and let it bleed out, okay? But what, but if you're in that situation, <laughs> you know, um, what you can do is you can find other options to lower your interest. So for example, let's say you have um, a, a debt with FE credit and, and you have to pay 20%, all right? Find another credit company that offers a lower interest rate. So by transferring your debt from one credit company to another, you will save on interest. That is if you cannot pay back your debt, right? That's one thing that you can do. So number four is manage your debt. Now we talk about all the things you can do about cutting your spending, you know, like reduce your debt, manage your debt. Now we talk about number five, which is how to ensure your income, all right? Number five is to prove yourself valuable in your job, all right? So you probably have a job. If not, well, you're fucked, right? But if you have a job, now's the time to prove to your manager, prove to your leader, prove to your boss that you are a valuable member of that company. You have to show that you are important. You produce a lot of results. You can help the company grow. The boss needs to see it, right? When they see that you're valuable, then you're less likely to get laid off, right? But if they think you're useless, they think you're just an extra person in the team, then when it comes to the time to cut people off, you will be on the list. So now is the time to show yourself off, prove yourself valuable. You can do that by actually delivering results, like fix the bug, right? Uh, you know, produce the financial report, make the product more, more performant, serve the customers better. And more importantly, your leader, your manager, and your boss need to see it. If they don't know that you're doing a great job, they don't know, right? You gotta let them know that you're doing a great job. You really have to do a great job and they really have to see it. And when, when that happens, then you are safer from layoffs. And if in your job right now, nobody cares about you, nobody is giving you something important, like nobody actually believes in you, now is the time to be proactive and reach out to your leader, your manager, your bosses, hey, give me a new project. I wanna work on a new project, okay? And also you should learn some new skills, right? So take on new projects, learn some new skills, become useful right and even if you get laid off let's say you did all that and you still get laid off at least you know you have something to say on your cv right you did this project you did this you did that so you'll become more attractive to the next employer right so now is the time to build those new skills take on new projects be proactive and do more and when when bad things happen now you can take all that experience and show off to your next employer So you know you may not keep that job because the economy is in terrible shit, all right? So start a side hustle. Maybe, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of freelance sites on the internet like uh, Fiverr, like I don't know, you can you can search for them and uh, you can offer your services on those sites and uh, you can make a side income. 
Uh, there are many sites like that and uh, that's one way to start a second income and in the event that you lose your job you, uh, you still have your side income uh, so that's one way to mitigate the risk of getting laid off but of course I always say you know just do a great job with your first job so you don't have to worry about that right if you're doing shit work at your job then of course you know you're gonna you need to worry and you probably need to pick up a side hustle uh, so if you're like a shit employee, maybe pick up a side hustle. But if you're a shit employee, your side hustle is gonna be shit too, because you know that's the way it works. Like shit only breeds shit. All right. Good people don't need a side hustle. Bad people need side hustle, but they're probably not good at side hustle anyways. You know what I mean? All right. But just an idea, you can start a side hustle, but not for the employees in my company. Because in my employment contract, it's very clear you cannot start a side hustle. We do not allow people in our company to work on a second job. And when we find out, we lay you off. For sure, right? So that's our company. If your company allows it, you know, you can consider it. But for our company, if you work on a side hustle, we fucking kill you, alright? It's in our contract. But if you work for our company, you know, you can start a side hustle by talking to me. You say, Tom, you know, I see there's a problem in the company and I want to help and solve that problem and I want to get paid for solving that problem. And you know what? When people come to me like that, I'm like, yeah, sure. I don't necessarily believe you can solve the problem. I probably think you're a fucked hard. But, you know, but if you come to me and say you can solve a problem and, 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 you will, and you're willing to get paid on the result, I will say yes, go ahead, right? I pay you on result. If you can give me a million sessions visitors on my website and yeah I'll pay you anything you want right if you can give me uh, a new feature in my product yeah I'll pay you whatever you want right so I mean if you if you work for me you don't need to go out and look for side hustles you can get side hustles in my companies right so just an idea Let me take a sip of this wine. You know the economy is not good right now, right? So employers want people with skill sets. So now is the time to learn video editing, uh, photo editing, learn a new programming language, you know, uh, learn how to do Excel because, you know, Excel is kind of useful. I, I have hired people that don't even know how to use Excel. What is a fucking pivot table? Oh, you know, like, <laughs> Right? I mean, you don't even know what a pivot table is or how to use VLOOKUP <laughs> and then, you know, like now's the time to learn, right? Now's the time to learn all those things because they will become useful in your current or maybe even future jobs. So learn new skills so that you become more valuable so you're less likely to get laid off. Not everybody's good at networking, but now is probably the time to start learning how to network. So go to events, meet people, meet other companies, because assuming that you think you're gonna get laid off, right? Then you, yeah, if you're a great employee, you don't need to worry about it, seriously. Only the fucking fucktards need to worry about this. But if you think you're a fucking fucktard and you're probably gonna get laid off, that was the time to get networking, right? Go, go meet new company, meet people, and so that when you do get laid off, you have a smooth transition into another company. Again, good people don't need to think about this. Only the shitty people need to think about this. Go to events, meet people, shake hands, introduce yourself, tell people what you can do. But most likely if you're shit, you can't tell them what you can do and they, they don't fucking believe you anyways. Yeah, if you're fucking fucked hard, then yeah, you should keep your CV update because you're gonna get laid off, all right? You're gonna get laid off. So up, keep your CV update so that in the event, the day that you get laid off, you can start looking for a new job. Makes sense. Number 10, because you're gonna get laid off, so <laughs> now consider reducing your housing cost, all right? So I don't know what is your housing situation. Maybe you live by yourself. Maybe you live in a shared apartment. Maybe you live with your mom and dad. Maybe, maybe you have to consider, you know, finding a roommate to share the housing cost. Maybe you need to move back with your mom and dad just to reduce the housing cost because by reducing the housing cost, and for most people, housing cost is number one expense, right? For business, payroll is the number one expense. For individuals, the number one expense is always housing. So if you can get that cost down, then you will have more money for saving. 
because you're a fucktard, you'll probably get fired and you need more savings to cover your emergency. So therefore, you need, you need, you need to reduce your housing cost. Uh, this, this one, uh, I don't think you need to worry about it because you're a fucktard, right? So like you need to continue to invest, right? Yeah, fuck, you're fucked up. You don't have money to invest. But let's say if you do, right? If you have, if you're really a responsible, sensible person, and uh, you know you make an income and you put 20% of your money into a savings account. Now, maybe instead of a savings account, look for other investment vehicles. Maybe stocks. Maybe um, you know REITs. There are many, many things that you can invest in that will give you better return than the bank and look at different investment vehicles and diversify your investment. Don't put all your investment in one basket. Don't invest in only a single stock. Don't just buy Vin Group stock, okay? Because, you know, that's a huge risk. I've done that before and I've told that story before. There was a time when I invested in a single stock and uh, that company went bankrupt and, you know, I, I had a huge loss. Uh, I mean huge, massive, so much money that you probably cannot make in your entire lifetime. But for me, it was, uh, oh, oh, okay, oh, fuck that, right? But, but uh, the lesson here is don't, don't, don't put all your money in a single investment vehicle. Always diversify. And also you have to take a long-term approach. Let me drink. When you're investing, we're investing for the long term, the five year, the 10 year, right? So when you invest in something, it's not like you look at the, the value, the stock value every single day, say, oh fuck, it's going down, oh, it's going up, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down more, right? It's not like that because when we invest, we're actually uh, investing for the long term. We're not looking for the day to day increment. We're not looking for the day to day benefit. We're looking for the five years, 10 years. If I invest at $5 in the next 10 years, this stock is gonna go to $15. That's what we're looking for. And that's how you should think too. You don't need to think about putting the money in and, and then taking it out two days after because nobody can predict the short term. Nobody can predict the short term. But generally, if you invest in the long term, it's more clear. It's, it's more um, guaranteed because if you invest the right companies and uh, give it enough time, the general value for real estate, for stock will always rise. All right. So there are 11 things that you can do to uh, protect yourself in this recession and maybe at the end of it, thrive from it. All right. Uh, actually, maybe I'll just add one more thing at the end here. Generally in a recession, values of many things go down, including houses, apartments, cars, you know, there's a lot of people selling like their hot sexy cars right now because they need money. Uh, so if you have the money and now's a good time to invest into those assets, actually don't buy a car, that's stupid, all right? Only stupid people buy a lot of cars, right? But you can look at, um, you know, like, uh, oh, don't buy a boat, all right? Don't buy a boat, okay? That's like stupid people, only only stupid people buy a boat because those things are depreciating assets, you right? know? Like they, they, don't, they don't keep your money. Right, that you lose money with those. Look at real estate, look at REITs, look at stock, uh, but have a long-term approach. Now's the time to pick up some, you know, good deals because all the values are are probably at their bottom right now. So now's the time to get in onto, uh, you know, some investment vehicles. If you have the money, if you don't have the money, uh, don't invest, right? If you have like 100K or 500K, I'm talking about Vietnamese dong, right? If you have like, like $50, don't even think about investing. Instead, think about how to increase your skill sets, inc increase your ability to do things, right? And so that you can be more useful to companies and other people. That's how you're gonna create value when you have no money, right? You don't have money, then you have to have skills. When you have money, then you can use money to make more money. I hope that makes sense to you, man. All right, so, so take some fucking action. So here are the 11 ways that you can protect yourself against this um, very difficult recession. It's gonna last a while, all right? And don't be a fucked up.